What is going on, fellow fans of Clash of Clans? It is your host, Galadon. Super happy that you are here. Happy to be here as well. And okay, so today I couldn't really decide what to call this video, but we've got some Archer Queen antics. And what I've got is seven examples of what could seem to be mysterious or unusual behavior from the Archer Queen. We're going to take a closer look at it, and I'm going to give you, the viewer, the opportunity to chime in with your own opinion or explanation as to exactly what happened in each instance. All right, so we've got, again, seven attacks, seven different situations where the Archer Queen could seem to be doing something wrong, or maybe she's doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing. So let's start with case number one, going it alone. And it happens right about here as we freeze the frame. Now notice the Archer Queen has used her ability. She has her archers surrounding her. Together, they are targeting that air defense. And the next closest target is at the very top of the screen, another air defense. What we are going to take a closer look at is how everybody decides to get there. So as we get ready to unpause this frame, watch closely the path that the Archer Queen takes versus her archers. All right, here we go. There they go. And yes, the Queen was the only one to decide that a wall was necessary to get there. Every other archer has gone around to the left and is actually going to directly take out the air defense. The Archer Queen, by herself, stuck on the wall until the air defense goes down. And then by that point, she's already committed to the interior of the base. This decision seems kind of obvious because she goes in, the Archer's already on the outside of the base, and this one, I don't know, you can, again, put your explanation down in the chat, in the comments if you like, under case number one. It appears that the Archer Queen, under that invisibility of her ability, maybe was faster, slight positioning difference right there caused her to go right while all of the other archers, archer queens in training, went left. Okay, so we're moving on to replay number two, another example, and this is a war attack, and I have to say, this is actually a CWL attack that I was participating in for Tribe Academy, a very exciting CWL because, well, we'll get to that in just a moment. But this is case number two, and I call it so close yet so far. And the behavior happens relatively early in the attack. So notice the Archer Queen working on the Lava Hound right here. Eventually, the Lava Hound will pop. We'll get to those pups. There goes a freeze. Here are the Lava Pups and the Baby Dragon right in the middle of things. And then watch as the Archer Queen moves in after the next structure. Everything is down, out of the way. The King, the Lava Hound, the Lava Pups, Wizard Tower. Okay, then the Builder Hut, right? After the Builder Hut, what do you think? Where is she going next? She went after the Builder Hut to the Cannon, which is, you know, whatever you want to say, that's fine. Cannon, then she goes to the Elixir Collector. From here, where do you think she's going? Now remember, it's not the next closest structure to the structure she's targeting. It's the next closest structure to her. So indeed, once she finishes off the Elixir Pump, she is headed back all the way back over here to the Clan Castle. And this really is just a simple example of what could be an explanation for other behaviors you might have seen in the Archer Queen, because it looks like, wait a minute, wait a minute, the town hall's way closer to her. Well, it was closer to her now, but it wasn't closer to her when she was shooting at the Elixir Collector. So, you know, that's one of those things where you have to always look back. If you think that your queen has done something ridiculously stupid, Perhaps taking a look at a replay can explain it. Two things. So one, look for the next closest building to the Archer Queen's position. And then number two, and this is going to become critical later on in the episode. And that is, remember that the Archer Queen can't play chess. Okay, and what I mean by that is that she never looks ahead more than one building. And perhaps that's, you know, machine learning. It's impossible. Maybe it's too much programming code to allow the Archer Queen to have that much foresight, but she's only going to look to the next target. She never considers, what is the target after that? Is this gonna put me in a bad situation? As far as am I gonna to have to get through a bunch of walls to get out? She just sees one building at a time. If she could see more than one, then obviously she would act very differently in some cases, but yeah, that's not happening today. So we will see some other attacks today where she obviously is not looking forward. She just sees one building at a time. Now in this replay right here, I just wanted to go ahead and play the rest of this out because yes, this was my first ever 
CWL Triple for Tribe. Uh, it wasn't with Tribe Gaming, it was with Tribe Academy, but that's okay because a lot of the gaming guys move over to Tribe Academy during CWL, and I had had many, many very close calls. In fact, I think that I've had two 99% time fails in CWL for Tribe Academy. This was my very first three-star ever, and I have to say, I was super excited about it. It was very much fun for me to get it done and just to be finally grabbing that three-star, and uh, there it was. And thanks again for the Tribe guys for having me in the clan, even if it is just to uh, um, donate troops most of the time. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to another replay. And this one is actually very easily explained. This is Dave. We're just going to show a portion of this attack. And uh, this one is case number three. It's all in the timing. Now, as we begin this replay, take a look closely at Dave's army as soon as the text gets out of the way. There we go. And you'll see that he's working Queen Charge Hog Rider with Wall Breakers. So he has six Wall Breakers. And the idea here is that he wants those Wall Breakers to open up that outermost wall, let the Archer Queen get to the Town Hall without needing to use the Siege Machine. So we're going to go to slow motion here in just a moment as he's going to drop his first three wall breakers. Here they come. So they're in, they're out after that outer layer of walls. And you'll notice as the giant bomb goes off, the wall breakers are able to get through most of the wall, but they can't get the wall down completely. The Archer Queen is working on the air defense. Next will be the wizard tower. And here's where it all goes wrong due to just a split second. Watch the timing between the Archer Queen destroying the Wizard Tower and the Wall Breaker getting the wall open. Right here, the Wizard Tower goes down first, and then the wall goes open. The Queen is already committed to the outside pathway. You'll notice it appears that she completely overlooks this giant hole in the wall, but due to what had to have been like a tenth of a second or less of timing right there, the Archer Queen had already mapped her next pathway to the next building and then the wall opened after that decision had been made. Remember, she only thinks of one building and she doesn't recalculate once she's committed. Now, luckily for Dave, he has a jump spell and he actually gets the Archer Queen to come back in. He saves the fail and ends up grabbing the Town Hall in this attack. Now, we won't watch the rest of the attack, but let's just say Dave did get a save. He didn't quite get the three star and probably because he had to spend too much time and resources right here getting the Archer Queen in, but at least he saved it. And that is the great sign of a pro war attacker, somebody that always has a plan B. That right there saved what could have been a critical one star fail in CWL. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to case number three. And for this, we're going to look at a Legend League attack from yours truly using Pekka Bow Bats. Now we are going to fast forward through most of the attack and get down to the interesting part at the end where she hit some walls and that is because this is called case number four. So many walls, so little time. So yes, uh, obviously for years people have been saying that the Archer Queen's favorite structure to attack is always walls. But watch as we roll down near the end of this attack. We'll go back into single speed right here and the Archer Queen. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. And I would love to hear your feedback down in the comments on this case number four, because watch as she works on the Eagle Artillery. And remember, the next closest structure to her would be the Clan Castle. So now she turns and is working on this wall to get to the clan castle. Obviously, she can shoot over the next wall, so she's working on a wall right next to her, which is just fine, because after she gets this wall down, she'll move in and be able to get the elixir storage. But wait, there's a wizard on the clan castle, and now the clan castle has been destroyed. The archer queen, rather than continuing on the wall where she is, moves to strike a wall on the opposite side of the elixir storage. This makes almost no sense. Now, it could make sense in that if you're thinking, well, the Archer Queen was considering that she was going to be next to the clan. Oh, no, I'm confused. Really, this one's kind of beyond me. So I want to hear what you think down in the comments, because yes, she would have gotten to the clan castle on the original side of the wall, and then she would have gotten to the elixir storage and the gold storage up at the top of the screen. Instead, she's focused on a wall that's going to put her on the other side of a wall of the elixir storage, this didn't make a lot of sense unless it's like the pathing of, well, she would have, wait a minute, is she not done yet? Check this out, you ready? As the elixir storage goes down, one shot away from finishing the wall and she changes direction again 
and goes back to the original wall now because she's going after the gold storage. So that's like 99% damage on that wall. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it could be explained, but obviously she needs some help. She needs a little bit of a boost right here. Time actually runs out and she did nothing but shoot walls for like the last 30 seconds of this battle. So again, if you wanna share your opinions down in the comments, I'm more than happy to listen to them. I'm sure you're right. Just gonna say that now so we don't have to argue about it later. Okay, so we are now down to example number five and I will fast forward through this Legend League attack till we get to the point that I wanna talk about because this is case number five, step back and examine the situation. So the Archer Queen again is going to be the subject of close scrutiny as she approaches near the end of this attack we'll see as we roll on through here the archer queen again finds herself in the midst of a lot of walls which is you know typical and that's obviously player behavior player choice doing that queen walk getting your queen in there she comes back from just about gone and then right here watch closely as her next target is the gold mine on the outside of the base so she's focused on the wall that is keeping her from striking that gold mine. Yes, of course, we'd much rather her go target, say, the Expo, because she could get to at least three structures after getting through one wall. But that's not going to happen because, you know, she's always going to go after that next closest structure based upon her position at the previous structure. Okay, so she's through the wall. She's after the gold mine, but watch the hog riders closing in at the top of your screen as well. So now it's the mortar. Makes complete sense. Fine with that. She's working on the mortar, but the hog riders are working on the cannon. Watch the timing. As the mortar goes down, she is going to target the cannon. She's hitting a wall one time, and then the cannon goes down. She's turned. Where is she going? Not quite sure. She steps back, apparently just to get some distance between her and the wall, and goes after this wall. Now, of course, the wall that she had just struck would have been ideal once again because she would have gotten to the next building and then she would have been on the outside of the base and she could have continued around the corner and done just fine. Instead, she's retargeted and this looks a lot like the earlier clan castle elixir storage behavior in that she's targeting to be on the opposite side of a wall of the structure that she's after. And again, this may be an AI behavior that I just don't know, I'm not familiar with, I haven't figured out or deducted, it could have to do with coding, I'm not sure. Again, you're always welcome to share your opinions and or expertise down in the comments as she finally gets through the wall and gets to the inside of the gold mine. And yes, of course, that means she's on another wall and this time she will sit there for the rest of this battle or just about as everybody else comes in, including some heroic hog riders to finish off a beautiful three star in Legend League for Galadon. No thanks to the Archer Queen, who again turns to go after yet another wall. All right, thanks, but no thanks Archer Queen. And on to case number six. So again, this is going to be a mostly fast forwarded Legend League attack. Again, watch the Archer Queen at the top of your screen as we slow to regular speed right here nearing the end of this attack pretty quickly and the Archer Queen just, okay, let's go ahead and pause it right here. So the Archer Queen working on the Elixir Collector and her next target, obviously the geared up Archer Tower that is just below her, okay? So watch very carefully here as the Archer Queen's behavior is going to go from strange to bizarre very quickly. Okay, so as she's working on this, we can kind of get an idea of where she's going. It looks like there's an air sweeper below that as we go forward. Now she's on the wall because she has to get through this wall in order to get to the Archer Tower, obviously, right? There's really no other pathway to it. Although, of course, again, the wall to the right of her would be smarter. She could get to both that and the Elixir Storage together. But as we move forward in the attack, you'll notice that she is eventually, of course, gonna get through this slightly lower level wall, which is kind of nice, saves her a little bit of time. Now she's through and after the Archer Tower, right? Notice that the Air Sweeper is about to go down as well. Archer Tower down, Air Sweeper down. Now, where does she go? This is where you might think she would go after a wall right in front of her. One of these wall segments, right? But no, you've been watching this episode. You've seen the earlier cases. You know what's about to happen, right? Sure enough, she's going towards the wall opposite the Elixir Storage. So what is emerging here is a behavior pattern that we're seeing at least three times in today's episode. And that is choosing to go not the most direct route, 
maybe it has to do with the space. And what I mean by that is, don't think of it as the Archer Queen getting to the next structure. Think of it as the Archer Queen getting to the position where she needs to stand in order to get to the next structure. And that's where she lacks a little bit more foresight. Now right here, check out another strange behavior, just a little bonus. That's right, archers all over the place, choosing multiple positions, and then some archers actually changing their decision about the wall and moving on, joining the archer queen. This one, kind of beyond me. It may go down to, again, positioning, and each tile that the unit is standing on determines a different distance to the next structure and decides that they want to sit on a wall. So three archers sit on walls while the archer queen moves on. That's right. Remember, they are archer queens in training. Okay, and that is case number six. Now for case number seven, this is just a brief clip at the end of a Legend League attack of my own. And uh, I like to call this one case number seven, gender equality. And the reason I say that is because yes, the Archer Queen has some questionable AI. She does some strange things, but she's not the only hero with a hangup, the misguided monarch, the royalty that needs a reality check. Check out our Barbarian King friend as he goes after this barracks, and what does he do next? Not the Wizard Tower, that's right, he finds a wall. Because his queen is gone, he's decided to try to help her out with her mission to destroy as many walls as possible. And again, it probably comes down to his positioning, what he considered closest. I don't know, for me, that looks like an AI fail. The Barb King wasting his time on this wall, but he does manage to get through. He is going to destroy the wall, and maybe that is a small victory for him. He never lays a hand on the Elixir Collector as he goes down, and then ironically, right at the end of this attack, come through. Yes, his barbarians from his ability, they have gone around the outside of the wall, they get the Elixir Collector that he was after, and we wrap up a marginally good Legend League attack. And that will also wrap up today's episode, but thank you for sticking around all the way to the end. You're the true hashtag Galafam. I appreciate every last one of you. Now get out there, appreciate the best of the rest of your day, be kind to people, animals, and planet. I'll see you all back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. Galadon, the queen's not crazy, she's just getting a bit elderly. You'd know about that, wouldn't you, Galadon? <laughs>